one. take two all right everybody we're here and we're live and i think we're actually live this time with uh, billy sherwood my friend who was kind enough to join me for a little chat and some hanging out and uh yeah it's awesome to have billy here we're gonna we're gonna talk to everybody on facebook and youtube land for uh, about 10 minutes or so and then we're gonna bring it back to my patreon uh where i will allow some questions to be uh asked and uh, yeah, so definitely check out the Patreon. The link will be uh, in front of you, so you can join us for the whole chat um, and have your chance to ask questions. So uh, welcome, Billy. Hey, hey man. man. Thanks right. for having me, man. This is an amazing uh, thing to be able to do. I really appreciate it, man. Uh, we all we all learned a little bit about the technology to uh, to do these kind of hangs and everything in in the. Uh, lockdown period Correct. Uh, yeah so yeah so yeah. we uh, started doing a lot of streaming and started this patreon thing and it's been a lot of fun and it's right been actually really cool connecting with uh you know friends music makers you know like it's been awesome so great That's to have great. you here man right on well i'm happy to be here thanks for having me yeah so uh i guess we, we can start off by uh allowing you to fill us in on what's going on i know that you've been really busy with uh all your various projects and i'm not sure everybody watching this knows who you are but i'll just say that billy is an awesome producer we've worked a whole lot together on a lot of albums that he's produced and uh, multi-instrumentalist and awesome singer and uh maybe a lot of you know know your work with yes uh, these past many years and I got to tell you before we get into things that you know I think the first time I heard your music and what you do was the first World Trade album oh wow and it was one of these albums that I really really loved and I kept it on you know I would play it a lot because I thought it was oh, great wow. and there was a t there was a period of time where I was having trouble finding it like I didn't have the vinyl anymore and I was like well now I got to try to find a CD or whatever and I finally like it's released again you know and uh, digital platform, yeah. so it's there. But I really, really love that. And then I, of course, understood from the sound how, you know, your your uh, upbringing into the whole yes thing, kind of spiritually, musically, all fit together. So it was cool to watch yeah. you uh, kind of, you know, meld into that whole whole world. The evolution so, of yeah. things. I know that yeah, was a really yeah. important record uh, in terms of the migration into the yes sphere. Um, and actually Squire had heard those demos, uh, before we'd even hit the studio and sent a message to me through, uh, Derek Shulman, who, you know, is the, was the lead singer of Gentle Giant as we know him, but he was also a very big, is a very big sort of record industry mogul guy. And, uh, he introduced Chris and I, and, and we became fast friends and, uh, I actually had Chris sing on a song on that record called Sense of Freedom, which, you know, was a was a real cool thing to have him in the studio. And yeah, it's just a really important record. And I, I'm very proud of that record for many reasons. And and it, it's it's one of those moments in time you look back and go, that's why that happened. You know, Oh yeah, right, yeah, right. pretty, pretty trippy. Yeah. And you never know in life what's uh, what's going to happen. You just keep on putting out the energy, and like amazing things can just kind of happen. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fortunate and blessed in that you know I, I got to join and become a member twice now <laughs> of my favorite <laughs> band of all time. You know, so yeah, that's so uh, awesome. Yeah. You know, Let's see. I, the I could, first time you played, did, the first time did you play more guitar than the second? And the second time, of course, you were yeah, the fill through, in on through, bass. Through, through Open Your Eyes and the Ladder, I, I was uh, basically the rhythm guitar player. I played some leads on uh, the stuff that Steve wasn't really interested in playing on, you know, the Raven era stuff. And so I got to spread my wings a little in that regard and play some some solos. But 
you know, I was there to serve the band and, and just do, do the best I could to inject some, some energy into it and, and propel it forward at a, at an interesting time. Cause I had just finished actually producing keys to ascension two. Um, and, uh, just as I was mixing that record, Rick Wakeman quit the band again. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. they were kind of disjointed and fracturing and s- splitting up again. And, right. you know, I looked at Chris uh, sitting in my studio and uh, I said, you know, I, I've known you guys a long time. I, now I can't just sit here and watch this thing end. So let's take the initiative and, and, and see what we can do. And it's, it worked out, mm-hmm. but yeah, playing guitar through those four or five years, whatever it was. Um, but I never in a million years imagined playing bass with yes, you know, and replacing Chris. Cause we all thought Chris was going to outlive us all. You know, he right. was just it just that seemed like guy. he was like a tank, you know, like this. Yeah. So it was all yeah. it was a big shock and a, and a very moving, uh, emotional right, part right. of life there. But, uh, you know, yeah. when he asked me to do it, there was no way I was going to say no, that's for sure. Yeah. And, right. Uh, of course. The music. It's, a, I, so it's you. hard to fathom now. It's, 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 I've been doing it for six years now. You know, it seems like I just started yesterday doing that, but wow. it's been quite a long time now, you know? And, and yeah. life has moved on. Yeah, pretty much. It must be awesome to play, to put yourself in the headspace of those Chris Squire bass lines because he was well, so so unique. And not only the the quality of the sound, but also his choices of notes. He wasn't the kind of bass player that just played. He always moving and playing his own little melodies that happened to include one of the notes within the chord. And <laughs> it was just a great. I love that. It's exactly. so influential to me, but, to, you know. Yeah, I mean, I was used to, I tell the story that, you know, in the, the earlier bands I was in, they would always just, you know, if they were playing in G, they'd, they'd get irritated with me and say, can't you just play a freaking G? Right, right, yeah. <laughs> then yeah, I would totally. say, well, but Chris wouldn't do that. And he right. did it pretty successfully, yeah. so why don't we try this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? right. Like, what but about yeah, the root? It's, <laughs> it's funny, and I, I think you'll relate to this on a keyboard level, but for me, uh, Chris the composition is what makes him who he was as for instance, Keith Emerson's voicings and his choice of notes right. made Keith yeah. stand out in his way amongst other great sure. keyboard players. Yes. And, yes absolutely. You know, there are those guys who are just thinking about the chords in it's such a unique yes. way. And You're it's, right. it's really, a, right. it's an honor to play all that stuff. And there's, there's certain moments on stage that just hit me and, and, you know, I can't help but get these waves of emotion because they're just, tied into these oh. amazing bass parts you know yeah yeah i, I remember uh when dream theater went on tour with yes we did like a summer i think it was and we just you know right. these different venues and we would yeah. be playing first and then yes we'd close the show and when we were done every night i would go out to the audience because i had to listen to it because they were playing all of close to the edge and close yeah. to the edge was like my favorite album of all time you know like yeah. i listen to it every night after the show to sit there and go wow this is so cool yeah. <laughs> I, and, and you know the other thing for me is like i mean i've known these guys for a long long time now uh yeah. but it it still trips me out when i look over and you know your lead guitar player steve howe it's like that's a cool band to be in you know right. what I, mean? <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. I don't know if i ever told you this story but the other thing that happened while we were on tour with yes is that I always loved his lap steel playing. Oh yeah. Right? Playing all yeah. these amazingly beautiful melodies. And I dreamed about like kind of yeah. how to do that. So first of all, I developed some instruments with some programmers that you could kind of do the sliding thing. But beyond yeah. that, I really wanted to play the actual thing. You know, I play a little well, bit of guitar, but right. I wanted to play like the lap steel. So I hit him up for a lesson. Uh, a couple of times so i would walk up on sound to sound check while they were doing he would show me a little bit about what he was doing yeah and I, I loved it so much I, I was crazy enough to think that i could do it a little bit so i bought a lap steel and i ended up learning how to play it while i was laying down the track for the song called octavarium for dream Theater. oh yeah i brought yeah. it i'm literally sitting there like trying to play the tune <laughs> i must have done it a hundred times until i finally got oh yes that's the sound that's it and then i yeah. brought it on tour and then i played it every night i got good at it and i haven't played it oh, since but oh that's you know. cool it's a fun instrument that, to play I mean, you right know, it's, it's I, not I have, that easy though it isn't yeah. i have a couple of them and i i love turning to it to do unusual solos and or 
create unique sort of one of my favorite things is to create like chords by dropping the ebo over the pickup and just kind of rolling the, nice. the you know yeah, nice. yeah. and you, you get a you're really more advanced nice. than me yeah it's yeah. it's it's, it's a great instrument but steve yeah, steve's I, I, you know broke the mold by you know using that in such a de definitive way i mean yeah. the stuff on awaken and close to the edge as you said and you know it's just incredible you know just yeah incredible stuff. Uh, what, what was interesting to me about that the way he played that was that you know he had this particular sound on the guitar that everybody knows it's the steve how unique kind of sound but then when he played the lap steel it was almost like a different musical beast coming in if you will yeah he could play these yeah. luscious soaring smooth melodies which was not so much what he was doing on the guitar you know he played amazing things it was all classic and means so much to all of us but when yeah. he expressed a melody on the lap steel it was like the, the sky is opening up and you know everybody should start to pray or something because it's just so you know those, those moments one of my favorite things to play um, is going for the one, you know, with him down and down and down. And it's just like this rock and roll attitude. Right. That's cool. Played yeah. on the steel. It's just such a cool twist on on a rock thing, you know. Right. It's really cool. That's, that's the other that's the other side of it. Hey, we're gonna um, we're going to actually say goodbye to our YouTube and Facebook people, and we're going to switch to Patreon only. So definitely come and join us. The link for that is right in front of you, and uh, there you'll be able to follow up, follow through with our conversation, ask questions, and nice to see everybody. Everybody stay safe, and we will all see you on the road at some point in the not too distant future. We're gonna, yes. we're gonna be, all of us are hitting the road, literally, yeah. yes. But okay, so 